Welcome to another episode of Preparing for the Unexpected. I'm your host, Alex Fullick, and as always, we like to talk about things related to disaster recovery, business continuity, resilience, anything that can help you, your organization, or your community prepare for, respond to, and overcome adverse situations. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please feel free. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm the only Alex Fullick there. I'm really easy to find, and I do respond to everything I get. Today, we're going to talk about another book. As you all know, I love to read. And the book today is The Continuity Moment Insight, The Catalyst in Your Resilience Journey. And I'd like to welcome back to the show for, I think, your second or third appearance, Harsha Sastry. Harsha, welcome back. Thank you, Alex. And thank you for hosting me on Preparing for the Unexpected and bringing my book to the various audiences that we have. Thank you, audience, for being connected with us. And today, um, I, Harsha Shastri, as the author of the book, the Continuity Moment Insight, your catalyst in your resilience journey, is uh, the book that I have written. And uh, as you already might know, I'm a professional from BRI, BCI, FQA, UK, and various other institutions for business continuity and resilience. So my passion is business continuity. And writing has been my passion for a longer time than my profession itself. So thanks, Alex, again. And welcome to all my audience here. Well, it's a pleasure having you back. And congratulations on the book, by the way. I know Thank you very much, Alex. I know there's a lot of effort that goes into writing, having done it myself. So I really appreciate it when... Uh, uh, all the effort when people get something published and get it out there. I know all the effort that goes into it and behind the scenes. Thanks. So, so let's let's start talking about the book. For, <clears throat> first of all, how did the book come about? Because you structure it in a very different way. Yeah, absolutely. So, Alex, um, uh, the thought process of the book has been very different from my side. So, uh, I wanted to have a book which could be used as a guide, as a pocket guide, as a reference, as, uh, as a buddy, as a friend for any uh, business continuity professional, firstly. But this is a book that I want you to write for people in any age. It could be a child, it could be uh, a school going child, it could be um, a kindergarten uh, teacher, it could be a school itself, uh, it could be a college going student, it could be a professional, it could be somebody who's elderly to us and wants to uh, innovate the way in which a person can live more better and have a more resilient journey uh, in the process. So uh, in the process, I said the easiest way is to pick up the 26 alphabets of English and write a book with a story in it which everyone can read as a storybook. Everyone can understand a small theme of business continuity from it. At the same time, have a test after every episode to understand what has been understood by reading that episode. So it becomes an interesting journey across 26 milestones, across 26 maturity levels, across 26 days for an individual, 26 months for a department, 26 years for an organization, because the number of people vary from an individual to an organization. And by using this book as a maturity model, a person can claim that we don't have level five, but we have level 26 of maturity. So that was the thought process. And it was about redefining an internalized maturity model for oneself and exploring. As people move on from organizations to organizations, the mnemonics for an A to Z could keep changing to whatever the individual who is coming back 
in that journey thinks that it is right at that moment of time. So it's absolutely standardized, flexible, just like a rubber band. <laughs> so use it to wrap whatever you wish. <laughs> well, we're going to touch on a couple of those samples uh, in a few minutes. Yes. Um, but you, you mentioned the word journey a few times here. So I'd like to get your yeah. thoughts on um, why you consider or your thoughts on the consideration that resilience is a journey when there are still people out there that say it's kind of a state of being or a, um, a an end state to reach, but you say it's a journey. Can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, well, uh, whether you take business continuity or you take resilience, uh, the most important factor that one has to uh, understand is that one has to enjoy doing the activities in business continuity and enjoy doing activities in resilience. If you want to enjoy, the word enjoy can only get related not to a destination or to a starting point, but only to the journey which takes you through various aspects of life. It enables you meet various people. It enables you federate and enables you relish how you moved on and reached the place which itself can be an adventure by itself. So business continuity is an adventure. Resilience is an adventure. Provided you take it as an adventure and you start driving your pathway towards reaching goals that you set. You don't choose the same place as your holiday destination every time. You choose something different. And what you enjoy most is probably not the destination always. It could be the journey that you had could be much more pleasurable than the destination itself. And that's why I chose the word journey rather than making it very formal that it's a program, it's a stage, it's a maturity level. People get bogged down when you when you talk because business continuity and resilience is by design a very, very detailed subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the process of in the process of the subject itself being detailed, if you start configuring it to be a standard or to be it a maturity model, it makes it boring rather than engaging. So to bring in fun into the whole game, it's better to call it a journey because you can decide when you want to stop, when you want to start, and what is the best thing that you can do to enjoy. That's the aspect of journey. Uh, you know, taking journeys too, taking that a, a little step further, you want to experience new things all the time. You, like you said, you don't want to do the same thing over and over again. Well, then you're kind of stuck in the same spot over and over again. New journeys, new trips, new vacations, using your example, gives you new experiences, new things to learn. Yes, absolutely. So, so it, it's basically, so it's basically enabling an individual to start thinking differently. Every day, the individual gets up in the morning and starts looking at the sun. Now, in the book, you actually call uh, what we would say chapters or each section, but you call them episodes, yes. which is an interesting term to use for, for a chapter. What, what made you call them an episode? Yeah, okay. Uh, if you call it a chapter, if you call it a section, it's something that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, it's something that an individual will normally get in a textbook or will normally get into, uh, into a thesis that a person is writing to achieve or to communicate something. This book that I have written is meant to be a storybook, is meant to be a book which will enable you 
to take small pit stops and think to make your own notes. So if you look at the book, you have an episode which has a small story. It has a quote which makes you feel nice. It has a few questions where it makes you think and test yourself. And it also has a notes page where it prompts you to take a pencil and start writing. So it's just a resource for any individual, whether you are doing a business continuity project or whether you are doing a medical project or whether you are doing an innovation project. The 26 alphabets of English don't change. And every episode gives you a message which you want to use in your journey of innovation, of medicine, of uh, physiotherapy or whatever you may call it to bring in the flavor of a story you know but you have not been able to articulate. So it's enabling everyone to write their stories because people understand stories much more better than <laughs> what they would understand if you write it as a section, chapter, or whatever you may call that. That's true. People do remember stories you yeah. know, a, a lot you easier than... Episodes? Don't you watch episodes on the television? Yes. And you always say that next episode is coming. Let me switch on. So it's like that way. Preparing for the unexpected. People are waiting for the next episode coming in. They're well, not waiting. They are. <laughs> they're not coming in for the... They're not waiting for the next video coming in. No. Which is the next episode? Who's the next guest with Alex? That is what people are looking out for. Mm -hmm. That's... That's the rhythm of the game. Well, let, let's take a look at a couple of these episodes. Absolutely. And the, the first one I'd like to ask you about is E for experiment. Absolutely. Now, it's very easy to say E for exercise. It's very easy mm. for me to say E for everything. But I'm using the word E for experiments. The mnemonic that I've used is experiments because... The outcome of an experiment is either reconstruction, redesign, re-innovation, reintrospection, or it's actually an innovation by itself. Unless you don't experiment, you are not going to go through the joy of meeting your goal and finding out something very different. If you call it an exercise, then it's something like someone sitting with a ruler and saying, you have to do this. That's mm -hmm. not what we want to do. We want people to experiment. When you say experiment, a person will think, how, how can I test without taking a lot of stress, but also achieve my objective of the test to know that I can recover, start thinking. Start thinking, write a new guideline, implement the new guideline, experiment, display the POC. And that's how you start getting, exercising, getting accelerated because there is a competition to experiment and not a competition to do exercises, but experiment. Mm -hmm. That is the E concept of experiment. We've only got two minutes left, believe it or not. We're just flying through our time. So I'll give okay. you one more. R for relevance. R is relevance. Yeah. In my book, I've spoken about Y2K and the passbook update by an individual. The relevance. Today, we all are talking about cyber resilience, ransomware, etc., etc. But the relevance of all these events that we talk of with business continuity and resilience is about mass communication. So if mass communication is not there, there is no way in which an event can actually get resolved. You may call it a cyber event, you may call it a ransomware event, you may call it whatever it is. But until you don't go back to the basics, 
of mass communication and related to the relevance, though you have an IT system failing or a data breach, you would not be able to get through the end result of crisis management objectives without the right re relevance. So there is the connection of relevance, which every individual has to connect for various elements. That's what is R. I like that. I like that. On that note, we've come to the end of our first segment, believe it or not. Time flies. Uh, we are talking today with Harsha Sastry, the author of The Continuity Moment Insight. And we're going to change gears in segment two, and we will be right back. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody. <laughs> 